I'm a research associate at the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago in anthropology. And I will just take a few minutes of your time to explain the creation of this wonderful, wonderful mural. This was created by a group of artists whom I worked with as Kanjen Kalonghe mentioned in a previous project um, called Art and Anthropology, Portrait of the Artist as Filipino. The Philippine artists have stayed together, Philippine space artists stayed together and now call themselves the Durian Collective. <laughs> because they said they, um, well, they're brown on the outside, but inside they're not brown. I don't know. It's something that they thought themselves. Um, and um, just a little background, the project called Art and Anthropology was funded by the MacArthur Foundation. It was the first Filipino project that they, the MacArthur Foundation ever funded, so we were pretty happy to have that. Um, that project consisted of two murals, uh, one created in the Philippines, and here we have the one in Erewhon. Um, you can see our VIPs there. That's actually Mrs. Um, Araneta over there. and. Um, that's the Erewhon Center for the Arts, and then there's the UP, uh, he's not there, Mrs. Um, Pascual. Uh, and these are the 10 artists involved in the project. It was um, a, uh, the collaborative work of five Filipino-American artists in Chicago and five Philippines-based artists. And there you have the background of on the background is the study for the mural. This is the one that they created in Erewhon. So the Field Museum has over 10,000 Philippine artifacts in storage. Nobody can see them unless you have a special tour. The only Philippine artifact on display there is a golden terra, a small statue that's made of solid gold. And so it's become a sort of issue with the Filipino-American community in Chicago, why do we have 10,000 of these baskets and weapons and textiles in storage where nobody can see them? So what we thought we'd do with the project is take some of those out of storage and paint them, and this is now in the Erewhon Center for the Arts. And this is the one that you will be able to see at the Field Museum until June next year. So please come and visit us um, this was extended. It's a temporary exhibit. They were supposed to take it down a few months ago. They decided to extend it another six months, which is actually pretty unusual for the Field Museum. And as you can see, um, well, the way this was created, one side was created by Philippine space artists, the other side was um, created by Phil Americans. And the theme is the Filipino identity. Can you tell which side was Philippine space and which one was Filipino American? The one on the right is what? Philippines? Yeah. And um, it was a very, very interesting project because there definitely was a difference in the perception of the two groups. And that will be published in. Um, this academic publication by the world expert on art and anthropology. He's going to be coming up with a book this year um, from the, uh, published by the University of Oslo in Norway. And that's what you will be able to see at the Field Museum. The ones on the right are the works of five of the seven who created that mural. And the one on the left are the Philippines-based artists, uh, Philippine-American artists. And so now I will... I have the extreme pleasure to introduce the artists who have created the, that mural in alphabetical order. Actually, no, this is an alphabetical. So Emmanuel Garibay is one of the most prominent artists in the Philippines. Um, for those of you who, have, who are familiar with the art scene, his work is exhibited along or in auctions along with our solos in Manansalas. Um, so very, very prominent artists. We are really fortunate that um, he has agreed to do this. In fact, he's sort of the leader of the group. His work at the Field Museum is the one in the center. It's called Ilao. Um, 
he decided to paint one of the artifacts, but instead of painting the full artifact, he put a light in the middle to show that our perception is often distorted, our Filipino identity. And that's him at work. Next one, Jason Moss. He teaches art in Ateneo University. The one in the middle is his work that's on exhibit, and that's him. He's also a mountaineer. Leonardo Aguinaldo, based in um, Baguio. His work is exhibited in Ben, in ben Cabs or Ben Cabrera's museum. The one on the far left is the one on display. He works with wood cut or leather cut. So this is, you know, um, all sort of chiseled. And that's him. Florentina Junipas from Cebu. He is one of the most prominent portrait artist in the Philippines. He is the only Filipino with work that is displayed in the Vatican. There's a lot of commissioned artists. He charges by the square inch. That's how expensive he is. So, yeah, uh, I'm not able to afford this work. Um, the one on the left is actually hanging in my house on loan. That's for sale, the prodigal son, if anybody wants to buy work by Juning Pass from Cebu. How much? Let's talk. <laughs> I think it's discounted now because it's been, been in my house for six months already. Um, Otto Neri, that's him all the way on the left. He's based in Antipodo. He's also, he does wildlife and other portraits. That's the Philippine Eagle that he did for one of my books. Darby Alcoseba, he's not one of the original art and anthropology, but he joined because he was interested. He's based also in Cebu. Oops, sorry. And lastly, but not least, Orly Ipon. He is one of the best, when it comes to anim, an, anatomy and the human figure, he's a master. Um, won many, many awards. As you can see, it's just his rendering of the human figure is fantastic. Uh, this is just one of the f first murals that the Durian Collective created prior to this. This one was commissioned by someone in Cebu, apparently a close friend of our president, Duterte. And this is the Battle of Mactan. This is what they created for the Cordillera region. And I wasn't going to show a picture of this because I wasn't sure when you would see it. I wanted to keep it a secret. And so um, there are all the names of those responsible for the creation of this mural. And just a little side note. So I was actually in the house of Emmanuel Garibay when they started painting this. And I tell you, you know, I, I called Consul um, Romero. You remember that phone call? I said, they're all here. Can we start working on the mural? So he had to approve the design. And I was there uh, doing research to make sure that it was historically accurate. Um, let me see if I have pictures there. Uh, sorry. That's Emmanuel Garibay's studio and house. So you can see we started out with a blank canvas on the left. Those are the studies they made, pictures that we took from the internet. That's all of us um, at the end. And then Contra Romero visited my house where the painting was on exhibit. And we had a little merienda and he finally approved the after it was done. There you go. And so I will end with a little, just a short, short video of the actual creation that the artists have prepared for us.